Hello everyone, in today's video, we are going to discuss about energy. So first, what is energy? Energy is defined as the capacity or ability to do work. It uses the same units as the unit of work, which is Joule, for the SI unit. There are two common types of energy, the potential energy and the kinetic energy. Potential energy is the stored energy or the energy at rest. We usually use the equation potential energy equals to the mass times the gravitational acceleration times the height of the object to the ground. The kinetic energy is really is the energy. The kinetic energy is the released energy or energy in motion which causes the body to move. We usually use the equation kinetic energy is equals to one half of mass times velocity squared. There are some classifications of energy. For kinetic energy, we have thermal energy, which is the energy produced by the moving particles. Then we have mechanical energy, which is the energy of objects in motion. Then electrical energy is produced when there is a moving charge through the wire. And at last, magnetic energy is the energy causing push or pull. For potential energy, we have chemical potential energy, which is the energy stored in food and fuels. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in elastic objects such as spring and rubber. Then we have nuclear potential energy, which is the energy stored in the center of particle. And also we have gravitational potential energy which is the energy stored when the object is placed at some distance above the Earth's surface. We experience energy in different ways. For example, in mechanical energy, we can hear sound from the machine, and thermal energy, we can see spark, which is the type of light energy during the process of welding. Some illustration of each energy can be seen here. Thermal energy, we can feel heat either by conduction, convection, or heat, or radiation. For mechanical energy, it is formed when an object is moving or changing positions. Then electrical energy is commonly found when you are using electrical devices such as TV, handphone, laptops, vacuum, and many other else. Magnetic energy. In magnetic energy, aside from the energy caused by attraction or deflection of magnets, it can also be formed when a current in a coil is passing through a magnetic field, which later on will cause the coil of wire to turn. For chemical energy, same like what I said before, it is energy stored in food and fuels. Elastic potential energy is the energy stored in elastic material. We are going to use more of it, especially later when we are studying about oscillations. Nuclear energy is usually used in nuclear power station, wherein they use nuclear potential energy stored in a particle to generate power. Gravitational energy can only produce when there is some distance between the objects to the reference point. It is said in the picture that the brick has no potential energy when it's in when it is on the ground. This statement is only correct or true if we are finding the potential energy of the brick with respect to the ground and not to the center of the earth. Law of conservation of energy. Energy can't be created nor destroyed but is converted from one form to another. Then we also have law of conservation of mechanical energy which stated that the total mechanical energy of a body which is the sum of its potential and kinetic energy at any instance remains constant throughout its motion. To prove it, we can see it from here. This is an illustration of scientific pendulum. As we can see from the illustration, when the pendulum reaches its highest point, during that instant, the velocity of the pendulum is zero because the pendulum is going back down since it decelerates and then accelerates when it's going down. 
and the kinetic energy during its minimum point is now going to be totally transformed into potential energy during the maximum point. We can also calculate for the potential energy during the maximum point, which is potential energy is equal to ma mass times gravitational acceleration times the height, wherein we measure the height with respect to the center of the mass when it is located in the lowest point. This also proves that when the pendulum is at the lowest point, there is no potential energy left since there is zero height. Therefore, during the lowest point, the kinetic energy is maximum. The work energy theorem. The work done by a net force on a body is equal to the change of kinetic energy in the body. Sample question number one. A 5 kilogram object falls from the top of a 10 meter high cliff and reaches the ground in 1.4 seconds. A. How much is the object's kinetic energy upon touching the ground? B. How much is its kinetic energy one second after it started to fall? And how much potential energy during that time? Paul, stop the video if you are going to try it yourself. In a count of 5 seconds, I'm going to show the solution. Okay. For part A, how much is, is the object's kinetic energy upon touching the ground? As we know from the question, we have the time to reach the ground is 1.4 seconds, mass of the block, mass of the object is 5 kilograms, and the height of the cliff is 10 meters. To find kinetic energy, first we need to find the velocity. We can find velocity with the equation final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus the gravitational acceleration times time. Why we use this equation? Because we know that falling, free falling objects uh, doesn't move in the same speed because it accelerates due to the gravitational pull. So we have final velocity is equal to zero because free fall object doesn't have initial velocity plus the gravitational acceleration negative 9.8. The negative symbol here just states that the acceleration is moving downward times 1.4 seconds. So we have the final velocity negative 14 meters per second. Then after we have the final velocity, we can now calculate for the kinetic energy, which is one half of the mass times the velocity squared. After we calculate one half times five times negative 14 squared, we will have 490 joules, and that's the answer. For part B. How much it is in kinetic energy one second after it started to fall and how much potential energy during that time? We know that the mechanical energy is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy during that time and it is also equal to the maximum kinetic energy which we have calculated before it is 490 joules. So we, right now we need the kinetic energy during 1 second. The velocity during 1 second can be calculated by the for same formula which is final velocity is equal to initial velocity plus gravitational acceleration times time. So we have final velocity is equal to 0 plus negative 9.8 times 1. So we have the velocity during 1 second is negative 9.8 meter per second. Then we will calculate for the kinetic energy during that instance. So we have 1 half times 5 times negative 9.8 squared and later we will get 240 joules. Same like what we said before, mechanical energy is equal to potential energy plus kinetic energy. So we can find the potential energy during that time. 
is also equals to the mechanical energy minus the kinetic energy during that instance. So it will it will be equals to 490 joules minus 240 joules. So we have the potential energy 250 joules. Okay. So the next sample question. What force must be applied on a 0.5 kg box in order to increase its velocity from 40 cm squared, eh, 40 cm per second to 70 meter per centimeters per second through a distance of 150 cm in dying? Pause the video if you are going to try your own and uh, we will show the solution in the next 5 seconds. Okay, it is given from the question that the mass of the box is 0.5 kg. The initial velocity is 40 cm per second, which is also equal to 0.4 m per second. The final velocity is 70 cm per second, which is also equal to 0.7 m per second. The distance is 150 cm, which is also equal to 1.5 m. How much is the force? First, we know that force is equal to mass times acceleration. To find acceleration, we can use the equation final velocity squared is equal to initial velocity squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the distance. By transposing the initial velocity squared, we will have Final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is equal to 2 times the acceleration times the distance. Therefore, we have our equation of the acceleration will be A is equal to final velocity squared minus initial velocity squared is divided, in, divided with 2 times the distance. Then we insert the number into it. We will have the acceleration is equal to 0.7 squared minus 0.4 squared all over 2 times 1.5 and we will get 0.11 meter per second squared then we can calculate for the force right now force is equal to mass times acceleration so we have force is equal to 0.5 kilograms times 0.11 meter per second squared is equal to 0.055 newtons as we all know newtons is equal to kilogram meter per second squared but the question asks for dyne which is gram centimeter per second squared to convert the equation to convert the force to dyne we will need to multiply 1100 to our answer before so from 0 0.055 we will multiply it with 1000 and multiply it with another 100 so we will get 5500 dynes in total and that's the answer for the last topic I am going to discuss about three laws of motion by Sir Isaac Newton. The first law is also called as the law of inertia. Inertia is the tendency of a body to remain at rest or to continue moving. The first law stated that a body at rest will remain at rest and a body in motion will continue moving at a constant speed in a straight path unless an outside force will act on it. The second law is also known as the law of acceleration, which is stated that acceleration is directly proportional to the net force, but inversely proportional to the mass. It is the formula we used before, the force is equal to mass times acceleration. To find acceleration, we can divide it by mass and we get acceleration is equal to force divided by mass. The third law is also known as the law of interaction, which stated that for every action, there is an equal but opposite reaction. We can see it from 
the Archimedes force when we put an object on the surface of water and it floated 100%. Floated 100% means there's no part of the object below of the water. Then we will have the mass of the object will be equal to the Archimedes force. Archimedes force is the force from the water. Sir, Archimedes force is the force from the water pushing the object upward. So that's all for me. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe. Please don't forget to like, share, and comment on this video, and also press the subscribe button below.